Hello everybody. My name is Amin Busta. I am a PhD candidate at GM6 in Morocco. And today's talk is about the Byzantine resilience of distributed stochastic gradient descent. So after a brief introduction, I will state the problem and after that I will talk about some related works and how they handled the Byzantine resilience problem. I will also briefly present the theoretical guarantees in the full version of this talk. Finally, I will present the selection of experiments to empirically assess the performance of our algorithm. So as you probably know, many large scale machine learning applications are now implemented in a distributed way. Perhaps you are mostly familiar with the parameter server architecture, which was introduced by Google Research. So in this classical scheme, you have one parameter server, let's call it PS for short, and this PS can be possibly replicated, and a set of workers. And each worker has a local data set. So if we consider a stochastic gradient optimization, in suppose that you are in iteration number k, so what happens is that first, the PS broadcasts the model WK to all the workers. Then each worker computes an estimate of the gradient using this model and its local data set, and sends it back to the PS. Finally, the PS aggregates all these received estimates of the gradient and performs an update. Uh, this operation starts again until a certain criterion is met. Now, what happens when a proportion of these workers are malicious? So if the PS is only averaging the received vectors, then it suffices to just have one malicious worker to make the system completely fail. So what we need then is a more robust aggregation rule to defend against bad behavior. Here are some of the properties that we want from an aggregation rule. First, the training itself is already taking a huge amount of time. So the defense mechanism should be fast. Otherwise, the training will be a daunting task. It should also defend against a high number of malicious workers. And it should be noted that the maximum number of Byzantine workers that can be tolerated is half. Because if more than half are malicious, then it will be impossible to distinguish between the good and the bad. The third point, which is an important one, is the fact that the defense mechanism should not degrade the performance of the system when all the workers are honest. Because companies or firms that use distributed machine learning are not constantly under attack. Let's say that Byzantine attacks may happen once every five or 10 years. So in the rest of the time, your model should reach the full accuracy and it should not be limited by your aggregation load. And finally, the system augmented with the defense should have an acceptable performance when facing Byzantine works. And actually this is the goal of an aggregation rule. So here is our algorithm. It is based on very simple functions like addition, subtraction, computing norms, and medians. So basically, we try to come up with the closest vector to the coordinate-wise median, which is itself a good robust estimator, but only constructed from full gradients. So we do this first by computing the coordinate-wise median, and we store it in the vector m, okay? And we sub subtract it from every, every vector. Okay, every column vector in the matrix. And then we compute the squared norm of the centered vectors in the vector F, okay? And finally, we compute the median of the squared norm. So let's call it R, okay? And then we, we construct this interval from zero to R. And R is the median of the squared norm. So now the filter is very simple. We only select the vectors inside this interval only vectors that satisfy this condition, okay? And we average them. And this is our output. So from what we have seen, most defense mechanisms can be categorized as follow. You have aggregation rules that use historical information to filter the bad work while progressing with each iteration. You also have some methods that rely on redundancy, which is the classical way to deal with failures. And you have aggregation rules based on robust statistics. So our work falls into this last category. 
So in robust statistics, there are two ways to deal with subjects. You can either select whole vectors based on some rule or some filter and average only those selected vectors to come up with the final output. And this is what we called in the paper a full aggregation rule or full GAR for short. Or you can apply the rule directly on each coordinate. And this is what we call a blended GAR. Now from experimentation, we observed that blended GAR never reached the top accuracy in a setting where we only have honest workers, but full GARs do. So this is exactly the third point we discussed earlier on the fact that the defense mechanism should not degrade the system. So what we see here is an experimentation involving 50 workers and the aggregation rules are tuned to withstand 12 Byzantine workers. But actually, none of them are Byzantine in the experiment. So let's just forget for now the name Axel, which is the name of our algorithm, and take a look at the performance of these aggregation rules. So it's clear that full gauge, they have no overhead accuracy cost, OK? You see that they are reaching the, the, the accuracy of averaging. But the blended gauge, they have this gap, OK? So they, they don't reach this top accuracy, which is reached by average, okay? Okay, now let's compare the three most important properties of this closest gas to our work. So averaging is indeed fast, okay? So it has an optimal time complexity. We say it's optimal because in deterministic methods, one needs at least to read the content of the gradient matrix, which is done in big O and D. So N is the number of workers and D is the dimension of the problem. So it also has a, a low angular error, okay? So it is decreasing when the number of workers increase, okay? Which is good. The problem is that it is not Byzantine resilient. Okay, so F equals zero. Now we have seen the downside of blended gas. Okay, so although they have uh, an optimal time complexity, an optimal uh, breakdown point, and even some of them have reached the angular error of average, okay, which is a desired property. Now, to the date of publishing this paper, we only knew about three full guards. So chrome, multi-chrome, and boolean. Okay, their problem was the fact that they had a high time complexity, which was, which was quadratic in the number of workers. Okay, and they had a high angular error. Okay, so you see this term in square n appearing, even n square d. Okay, so this is bad. And they didn't have an optimal breakdown point. So, so they are far from the n bigger than 2f, okay? So for example, Boolean, it can only defend against nearly a quarter of the Byzantine workers, okay? So we came up with Axel that has improved on the three properties, okay? So basically we have taken the best out of the two categories. So we took optimal time complexity and breakdown point plus the low angular error from the blended approaches. And we took the low overhead accuracy codes from full gradient approach, which makes our aggregation the best as we will see in the evaluation section. Okay, now this is the set of assumptions made in this work. So the first one concerns the breakdown point. So we require that the number of F of malicious workers is less than half of the total workers. Now, the second and the third assumptions concern the cost function, and we want it to be smooth and strongly convex. But we also have a result on smooth general functions and three times differentiable, which is a consequence of the Byzantine resilience, but we'll see it later. So the last assumption is the classical assumption in this line of research. So we assume that we have an unbiased estimator of the gradient, 
okay? And, and their variance is bounded. All right. So the first thing to do was to upper bound the variance of Axel, so which was done in Lima 11. So all the theorems coming next are based on this upper bound result. For example, if we combine this result with lemma 12 on the controlled statistical moments, we are able to prove the alpha F Byzantine resilience of access. So let me talk about this a little bit. So we say that an aggregation rule is alpha F Byzantine resilient if it can tolerate a maximum of F malicious workers and Suppose that your output is this, so this is your function. This is your uh, this is the true gradient, and this is axis output, for example. So your function, your aggregation rule is alpha f Byzantine resilient if it, it has an angle alpha with the true gradient. So naturally, we want this angle to be as small as possible, even zero if you can do it. Okay, so a direct consequence of the alpha F Byzantine resilience is the almost sure convergence. So in the paper, we don't prove the theorem because it was done on the original paper. So it was sufficient to prove the alpha F Byzantine resilience of access in our case, to state the theorem. So this is indeed a weak convergence result because we only show that the gradient sequence will almost surely reach zero. So this means that if your function, for example, is like this, okay? So this means that you are going to reach a flat region of the cost function. So it could be a, a global minimum, which is very good, but it could also be a local minimum. Or worse, it could be a saddle point, which is very bad. Now in theorem 15, we prove convergence for strongly convex cost functions. So this is exactly how convergence equations are stated for all stochastic gradient descent methods. So you always have a decrease in term that will go, go to zero, okay? When the, the, the counter T will go to infinity. And you are left with a small term here involving your variance, okay? So it is important to have a gradient aggregation rule with a small angular error, which implies a small variance. So just for the sake of comparison, if you take vanilla gradient, uh, stochastic gradient descent, like uh, which has the aggregation rule of averaging, okay? So the delta will be equal to D sigma square over N. So this is decreasing with N, okay? Now, if you take some aggregation rule like Axel, we have this term here, okay? So this term is constant with the number of, regarding the number of workers, okay? So if you take prior full guards, they had, okay? They had angular errors with big O N, and this was bad. Okay, so at least Axel, with Axel we have a constant time regarding the, the number of workers here. So it, it's not, so it's not like averaging, okay, but we are approaching average. Okay, so up to now, all the results were stated in expectation. So we had results on the variance, which is the expected gap. We also proved the expected alpha F Byzantine resilience. And finally, we proved the expected convergence. So if you look at the last section of the paper, we also studied the actual error. So instead of having an expectation here, okay, which was done in every result, we dropped this expectation and we studied the actual error, okay? So this was possible by assuming a normal distribution of the gradients, and we use the theory of extreme value in order to prove a logarithmic upper bound of the angular error of Axel, okay? So prior work, they had for optimally robust uh, gradient aggregation rule. So if you have N greater or equal, greater than 2F, okay? So if you have N greater than 2F, 
then we had an angular error of d n squared. Okay, so now let's take a look at two experiments that were presented in the paper. Uh, actually, we have a whole section on empirical results for different data sets and different settings in the appendix. So in this first experiment, we train a CNN on CFR10 using 25 workers and 11 among them are Byzantine workers. So these Byzantine workers are implementing the attack presented in the paper Fall of Empires. So actually we have tested two attacks, the one in the paper Fall of Empires and another one in the paper called A Little Is Enough. So both, both of them, they are exploiting the fact that honest workers will send some values like normally distributed. Okay, so this is the mean, this is standard deviation. So what they do is that they send vectors here, okay, or here. So these vectors, they are considered as, as honest because, but they are in the tail of the distribution. And this is very bad, okay? So as you can see here, Axel has reached the best accuracy, so nearly 30% even with nearly half of Byzantine workers, while other guys were limited to 10%, okay? And even, even uh, blended guys, they were stuck at maybe 20 or 25%, okay? So the second experiment is quite interesting because Axel is the only guard conversion. And most importantly, it has reached the top accuracy exactly like averaging even with the presence of roughly one fifth of the malicious workers. So these workers were implemented the state of the art attack found in the paper little is enough. Okay, so as you can see here, Axel is the orange dotted line. So it has completely reached the accuracy of, of averaging. Okay, maybe even, it is even slightly better. I don't know if you can see it but it is slightly better than averaging, okay? While the other guys were stuck at 10%, maybe Chrome di did better in this experiment. It has reached 30%, okay? But it's still, it is still far from, far from the averaging, okay? And blended guys, they were all stuck at 10%, okay? Accuracy. So the model has diverged. Okay, so as a conclusion, we are left with some open questions that will be addressed in the future work, like whether it is possible to reduce further the angular error and achieve maybe the error of averaging, or can randomness enable better performance? Okay, and what are the guarantees that we can have when dealing with non-IED data? Okay. So this was all. Thank you very much for your attention. If you have any questions, I will be glad to respond. Thank you.